computer, we call it uh, I.O. Well, this is what the factory looks like. It's a lot of, uh, of uh, these centrifuges where they uh, rotate uh, uranium. Huh? And then they, uh, oh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of them. And then they make uh, material to create uh, bombs. Huh? At least that's uh, what everyone uh, thinks is what they are doing. This is the target. And here it becomes uh, interesting for us. Because this is how the root key on the, uh, on the IDE worked. This is the DLL, the library that the, uh, uh, that the, the software used, the IDE software used. In the old way, the software calls the DLL and the DLL access the DLC. The DLC gives back its program that's inside the DLC, that comes back to the uh, DLL, and the DLL gives the program back to the IDE. So the IDE can see what is inside the DLC, what is inside this box. But uh, the, the Stuxnet installed uh, a DLL in front of it, and if it detected that its own software it was read from the, uh, from the PLC, it hit it. It, it, it made it invisible. So the, it was impossible from, from this perspective to see that the software is uh, inside the PLC. It's, uh, it's hidden. And that's, that's the typical way a rootkit works uh, by hooking uh, API calls. Uh, yeah, but it, 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 was, it, it infected the, uh, the, the network connection between the CPU unit of the PLC and the, uh, uh, the actual I.O. of the PLC to uh, manipulate the speed of the uh, centrifuge every now and then. Very difficult to detect. A very clever uh, piece of software. We see that the blue cube is, is in fact a, a Stuxnet 2, it's an update, of, uh, so we have a, a new Stuxnet, uh, used uh, zero day exploits, uh, compiled with uh, C, also code sign uh, to uh, avoid it. And here we see how, uh, how it enters the system. It, it uses an exploit to get into a process of uh, Windows, the services process. It installs a driver in, uh, in, in Windows, which is code signed to get uh, system uh, credentials, so it can do anything in the uh, operating system itself can do. And uh, the driver uh, decrypts and runs the, uh, the main uh, software uh, as a driver. Uh, it doesn't have a specific goal. It is just uh, it, is, it, it connects to uh, servers and it asks the servers uh, what do you want to do with this system. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a different kind of attack. Uh, just for your information, the Netherlands was in the first line of attack, and they were after those kinds of uh, of uh, companies. Uh, all sorts of variants uh, that injected into antivirus. You see. How, how child's and easy it is to mess around in, uh, in, in operating system. This is an example of Windows. It's just as easy as Mac or, uh, or Linux, uh, sadly. And they communicated uh, using, and here you see how obfuscation is uh, used in all these techniques. They communicated with the uh, fake JPEGs. They were sending and receiving JPEG files but the JPEG files contained uh, hidden uh, encrypted uh, messages. Well, data structures, uh, the <coughs> operating system uses all sorts of data structures to manage all the resources, processes, memory, this. And it's very interesting to look at these data structures, what they mean. That is why I brought this uh, stack of books here. Uh, 
as an example of uh, where you can find information about the data structures of your operating system. If you want to, if you want to get into an operating system, if you want to do a memory analysis, you need to read this. I'm very sad to tell you, uh, because if you don't read this, you have no idea what you are looking for and what you're looking at. And you see that every operating system has a, has a good manual of what it's good. I have a Mac OS here, Linux, FreeBSD, uh, OSI, of iOS, uh, well, you name it. And for example, just for Windows, there are these uh, two fantastic books. They're quite expensive, but they're very good. And they show the complete data structures of uh, of uh, Windows, for example. And if you want to do uh, Windows forensics, then uh, you need access to this information. Uh, because then, otherwise, there is no way you can understand what's happening in the system. But if you, this is like a gold mine, because if you have this information, everything makes sense that you're looking at. And you, uh, you can figure out which, uh, uh, which processes are loaded, when they were loaded, when they were stopped. Which they allow for the DLL for a um, Here's just a few examples of uh, data structures. This is the data structure for a process. Look at how many. This is data structure for the page file. Uh, see, all these data structures, they're just, well, there's two books full. I don't have time to explain them all. Um, <coughs> if you do memory forensic for an operating system, you need to get information about the operating system. The uh, memory management unit is part of uh, every system with uh, a virtual uh, memory. This is the virtual memory of a 32-bit uh, Windows system with uh, multi-level uh, paging. You have uh, page tables. Huh? It's, it's, it's a translation between the virtual memory address Every process has a virtual memory of, in this case, 4 gigabytes, and that is translated to the actual frames in RAM that you have. And of course, the page file. So we have a page file and a uh, RAM. And this is, uh, again, all these data structures, if, if you need to examine, examine, examine them, you need to look at all the data, you need to read the books. shared memory, so all the processes 
share this part of the memory, virtual memory, and the bottom two big, that is their own memory for the process. So this part is exactly the same for all processes, because it's, it's exactly the same part of memory. Yeah. And only this is different. And here are uh, process uh, specific, this process specific uh, memory, you know, like the stack, the heap. The heap is where uh, data is. Uh, stack is where temporary data is. Uh, the code is in there. Uh, non shared uh, DLLs. And you see that the whole kernel and the whole operating system is up there. And that's shared. So you all have to read the phone. Tools that uh, are available. I have just a, a short selection of tools that for Windows. Uh, this is a tool which uh, shows exactly which uh, uh, steps are done by uh, processes as they are running. Could be a nice tool if you are doing forensic on a Windows machine and you want to keep track of what's happening in the system. <coughs> Process Explorer tells you exactly which DLL, DLLs are loaded. As, uh, as, uh, as we were talking about, so this, this, is just, this is just a few tools. Uh, CLR Profiler tells you exactly what the heap contains. You can see all the data on the heap. Very interesting. What data is on the heap, where does it come from? <laughs> what it does is visualize the data structures that are in here in these books uh, that are described. They visualize the data structures. Uh, these are the data structures of the heap. This is a new set of tools that has just been released by Microsoft. These were only for internal use, but they released them just a few months ago. So they're very <coughs> nice because they can do a lot of powerful things. Uh, this is a process dump. It makes a complete dump of uh, the process, the memory dump of the process. It's also a Microsoft tool. Uh, Kane and Abel, I'm going to skip this. This is uh, a tool that uh, 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 cracks uh, Windows passwords. That's one of the tools. So, and this is uh, Mobcrack, another tool to uh, crack Windows password. And I want to finish with, uh, with this website. I will put a slide, show, a slide series on, uh, on PLO from uh, a guy related to uh, this website. This is a fantastic website, and uh, half the our students are going to do uh, a practicum. Uh, 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 so we are going to play with something from this website. <laughs> uh, um, we are going to do something. We are going to uh, investigate uh, memory dumps. Uh, this is uh, a Python written uh, framework to do all sorts of uh, memory forensics. And I can uh, encourage you to uh, look at the slides that I have from this guy. And he uh, explains how the uh, framework works. And you can follow exactly all the steps that he uh, It's like a manual. And uh, the half class students are going to do that. So you don't need to worry. It's, it's, we are going to do that in the practical uh, hours. Uh, but for the UFA students, it might be nice to look at the slideshow and see what the, the Python tools can do. They do all the stuff. Uh, they do all the stuff that uh, uh, that we have discussed, like uh, dumping the process and so on. It's very interesting.